Hey, welcome back guys. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about the powerful and magical CSS Cal function. We will see what is this Cal function is, why is it so powerful and how we can take advantage of using it in our projects with some examples and use cases. But before we go further, just make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, so I already have some of the boilerplate code for my HTML and CSS. I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough for the HTML. I have a container which has H1 tag and the with two classes box and the box one. For CSS, I have a universal selector removing the default margin and padding. I have used CSS variables here. Uh, if you don't know about the variables, I have a video on CSS variables. You can check out later on or you can just click on the card above and jump to it directly. But it's not required for this video. Uh, it's okay if you don't have because we are not going to use much variables in it. The next I have the H1 tag, my container and my box with a background color and some margin padding and height. So before we jump into this CSS calculation function, it's very important to know that why we are learning the CSS calculation function as we already have the CSS preprocessors SAS where we actually can do the calculation. But there is a limitation in the SAS that in SAS you can do the calculations, but you cannot do the calculations for mixing of units. Like you cannot do a calculation of a percentage with a pixel or a view height with a percentage. And that is where this native CSS Cal function is very powerful and magical. You can actually mix up the uh, units as well. And you can do all types of calculations in the CSS Cal function like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And let me show you how we can do it. So I have this box one and first I'm going to give a width to it. So I'm going to give a width of 500 pixel. And if I give the 500 pixel of width, you can see that we get the 500 pixel of this box. Now we can do the same thing by using a cal function. So what I can do and to use a cal function, we write cal keyword and then we use the parenthesis. And inside the parenthesis, I can simply write 100 pixel and I need to do an addition. So I'm going to write plus and I can write here as 400 pixel and you will see it's still going to give me the same result. But one thing to notice here that when you actually use the cal function, you have to put a blank space between your values. Like if I miss this space, then it's not going to work here. In this case, it's working because cal function also has a fallback value. Like if you have made some mistake in the cal function, then this browser is going to ignore this. And if I actually remove this, then you will see that I'm getting a hundred percent width, which is not correct. So here I have made a mistake. And in case you made a mistake, you can actually give a fallback width, which will be utilized. So that's why it's very important to give a space here. Then only your cal function will work. Now let's see how we can do the subtraction. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste this and I'm going to comment this out. So in order to subtract, let me subtract. I'm going to use a hundred percent here. So this time I'm actually mixing the units. So from the hundred percent, I want to subtract 400 pixel. So now after subtracting what the actual value will be, it's automatically going to calculate. I don't need to take care of it. So if I save it, then you can see that now the out of hundred percent, it has minus the 400 pixel and for the multiplication. So if we want to do the multiplication, what I can do is uh, I want a 20% and for the 20%, I actually want to multiply by five. So it's going to give me a hundred percent because 20% multiplied by five is actually an hundred percent. For division, if I want to do a division, then I can do the division as well. For division, what I can do, I need to divide from the hundred percent. I need to divide it by five. So if I will give a division, then it's going to give me a 20% of the box. So this is how you can do the operation. Apart from that, the cal function is 
very useful when you actually want to give a margin or an equal spacing to your container from the right and left hand side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to give a width. I'm going to use a cal function and this time we are going to use the variable which we have declared. So I have already declared a variable of width which is the 100 view width. So I'm going to use that. So in order to use the variable, you just need to use the where and inside the where you can actually use the variable name and then I'm just going to minus, uh, let minus 20 pixel and I'm going to save it. So now it's going to have a 100% view width and it will minus 20 pixel. And this is very uh, useful when I actually want to get this container or the box in the center of my screen. So now I can simply do the margin auto. So if I do the margin auto, then you will see that now I get a proper spacing of 20 pixel uh, of 10 pixel on both the ends. So if I can also make this to 2 RAM, then it's going to give me a 2 RAM. And now if I actually expand my screen, the side margins, you will be very consistent in, in any of the screen device you want to view it because it will always going to be a calculative value. So if I want to nest it, so what I can do, I can actually write a cal here and now I can just add it here one RAM. All right, so now what I'm doing is that I am just adding a one RAM to my previous calculation. So this way you can actually write the nesting. So now if I save it, then you will see that the space on the right hand side and the left hand side is a little bit reduced because I have added a one RAM value to it. And this cal function works very well with the CSS variables where you only change the value at one place and it will automatically be used everywhere. So now you can see that we have a width here. So let me change this width to 80. So if I change this width to 80, everything will be calculated automatically because we are using this variable. So this is how you take advantage of using this cal function along with the CSS variables. Let me show you one more uh, example where this is very useful. So this is how our website looks like right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add one more box here and I'm going to change this to two and I'm going to add a paragraph here and I'm going to give a lot of epsom tax. All right, so now I have an another uh, box which is having this lorem epsom tax, but now what I want that my main container is at a width of 80 view width, but I want that this container should be expanded to at 100%. So what we can do using this cal function, uh, I can simply do a box two. And on the box two, what I can do, I can do a width of I can do a cal function here and inside the cal function, I'm going to use the same variable width and plus I'm going to do 20 view width. So this is going to give me a hundred view width, the complete, but I am getting a scroll. So what I'm going to do, I am actually going to use a margin. So for the margin, what I want, I want a 20 pixel pixel and I'm going to use a cal function for right and left. And for the cal function, I'm going to write 50 view width plus first, let me show how it looks if we give a 50 view width. So if I give a 50 view width, it's completely going out of the screen. So what we can do, we can actually get it by 50%. And if I save it, then now you can see that we can actually get a complete 100% of a div, even though our container is at 80 view height. And this all calculation is done by your cal function. You can also use the cal function while giving a font size. So it's not limited. You can use the cal function anywhere where you actually want to do some calculation with the value. So let me give a font size here. So I'm going to use a font size and I'm going to give a cal. I need a one view width plus I need a variable and I'm going to use a font size of my variable. So for this font size, I have already given a font size of one RAM. So whatever the font size is, I am just adding a one view width to it. And this actually is going to 
help me to change my font size when I actually increase or decrease my screen size. So now if I actually increase my screen size, you will see that the font size gets automatically increased. And if I decrease the font size will automatically get reduced. So, so there are multiple uses where you can actually use this cal function in your projects. So that's all I have for this cal function. It's not too complicated, but it's very important to know all this stuff because if we know it, then only we can use it in our project. So I hope you like the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. And thank you. Thanks for watching.